There are two general classifications of surveys, geodetic and plane. When measuring a small area, such as surveying for a small construction job, the area is assumed to be flat, aka the survey occurs on a flat plane. This is a plane survey. Because the world is not flat, vertical error results from this assumption. Over a distance of 300 feet, this error would only be 0 .002 feet negligible even for very precise projects. Along a five mile survey distance, however, this vertical distance error would be over 14 feet. When surveying a large area, such as a long highway or an entire state, it becomes imperative to account for the curvature of the Earth. The Earth is not a flat planet. This is called a geodetic survey. Surveying equipment measures distance along a line of sight. The error in the height or elevation at the target location due to curvature can be calculated. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can relate the curvature error, C, to the radius of the Earth, R, and the horizontal distance, K. Expand the binomial and then solve for C. The C left in the denominator here is added to twice the radius of the Earth. The curvature error, C, is likely only feet or a fraction of a foot, in comparison to the radius of the Earth, about 3,959 miles, this will be nominal and therefore an accurate solution can still be found by discluding it. It is important to keep track of units. C is reported in feet, while R and K are usually given in miles. The radius of the Earth is considered a constant for this equation. This reveals that C is squarely proportional to the horizontal distance K. All sight lines are refracted downward by the Earth's atmosphere. This results in another type of error when measuring vertical height over a long distance. Refraction. Refraction, or R, is affected by temperature, atmospheric pressure, and geographic location. Rather than creating a complicated equation incorporating all of these variables, engineers are safely able to assume that the refraction is roughly equal to one-seventh of the curvature error. This means that refraction will also be squarely proportional to K. Curvature error is the vertical distance from an assumed horizontal line to the actual ground surface. Refraction accounts for the amount the line of sight of the instrument was warped from that horizontal line. To find the distance between the line of sight of the instrument and the Earth's curved surface, refraction must be subtracted from the curvature error. This combined effect is often referred to as C plus R. C plus R is not an equation or function. It is a variable designation, like using D to represent a distance. Recall that uppercase C and R are functions of K. Subtract R from uppercase C to find C plus R. The constant in front of K is based on the relationship of K given in miles and C plus R in feet. Therefore, this constant will be different depending on the units of the given information and the units intended for the solution. This example demonstrates an elevation adjustment for curvature and refraction. Given an instrument height of 196.12 feet and a foresight reading of 7.42 feet, compute the curvature refraction adjustment for a siding distance of 945.10 feet. Then compute the elevation at point B. 
there are three curvature refraction equations to choose from. Let's use the one we derived earlier, which measures the sighting distance in miles. Applying the conversion factor and substituting the sighting distance for k, the curvature refraction correction is 0 0.0184 feet. We should get the same answer using any of these equations. Let's try this one that requires the sighting distance to be in units of thousands of feet. And it looks like we get the same answer. Now the elevation can be computed by subtracting C plus R from the foresight reading and subtracting from the HI. Rounding the solution to appropriate significant figure results in an elevation of 188.72 feet at point B. Now, let's try a level survey instrument set up between a known benchmark and a temporary point A. Here, a back sight is taken to an established benchmark BMQ743 and foresight taken to a temporary benchmark TVMA. Regardless of the height of the instrument or rods at either location, if the distance between the instrument and BMQ743 is equal to the distance between the instrument and TBMA, then the correction for curvature and refraction for the two readings will cancel one another out and an accurate elevation can be found for TBMA. So, computing adjustments for curvature and refraction can be eliminated by the way the survey is executed.